This is a talk about an optimization of BLS multi-signatures when used in a specific setting. And the title of our talk is Subset Optimized BLS Multi-Signatures with Key Aggregation. Um, this work is produced by the cryptography team of Nisten Labs. So let me start by recalling the idea of multi-signatures. Um, consider a signer with a secret key and public key. In order to sign a message, the signer is going to sign using their secret key and produce a signature sigma. The goal of a multi-signature is to allow n distinct, distinct signers to produce a single signature on the same message n. There is a trivial way to construct a multi-signature, where basically one can assume that um, the common public key used to verify the signature is what I denote as PK bold here, and is basically the collection of um, the three public keys. And the multi-signature is simply the collection of the three individual signatures on the message M computed by each of the signers using their corresponding secret keys. Although this uh, verifies, this satisfies the definition of a multi-signature, it comes with a cost. The size of this signature is logarithmic to the total number of signers. So um, a common goal when designing multi-signature schemes is to actually come up with schemes that offer signatures that are much shorter. There are two main techniques when co constructing multi-signatures. One is to assume an interactive protocol between the signers in order to compute the common uh, multi-signature. And the second technique is to assume a signature aggregation algorithm that can be executed by any designated um, uh, party. And in both cases, the goal is to have an efficient verification algorithm that on input, the collection of the public keys of the signers can verify the multi-signature. Certain multi-signature schemes also support what we call public key aggregation. And um, the idea is that instead of having the signature verifying, the multi-signature verifying under this collection of public keys, you also want to have a mechanism in order to support a very, uh, in order to construct a very short uh, aggregated public key as well. So in these cases, you also assume this key aggregation algorithm that takes as input the public keys of the signers and computes this aggregated public key. And now, of course, the verification algorithm admits that aggregated public key as part of the inputs. Uh, in terms of security, uh, the properties for multi-signatures are, of course, correctness and uh, also enforceability. When designing uh, multi-signature schemes, one should pay special attention to um, a certain type of attacks that are called the rogue key attacks. And um, in such attacks, uh, a forge, it's, it is basically a forgery attack, um, which can be caused if an adversary, uh, if an enforceability adversary, is allowed to choose their public keys in an arbitrary way. There are different techniques in order to avoid these attacks. And um, there are also many different constructions of um, multi-signatures in the literature each with its own trade-offs and uh, each uh, being secure under different assumptions. Of particular interest for this talk are multi-signature schemes, the verification algorithm of which is fully compatible with algorithms that are supported by blockchain systems today. And uh, such schemes are schemes like SNOW and BLS. The specific focus of this work is the BLS-based uh, multi-signature, and um, we focus on this scheme due to its elegant way to avoid raw key attacks and uh, due to the very, very efficient aggregation properties uh, that it supports. Multi-signatures have numerous applications in the blockchain space and beyond. Um, they can be used to build multi-user wallets where um, you need authorization by more than one users in order to um, uh, spend an asset. Uh, they have found numerous applications in layer 2 protocols. Just an example, they have been used in mixing services or by the Lightning Network. Um, they allow the collective signing of digital certificates, so they can be used in cases where one wants to issue um, a certificate that is signed by more than one issuers. 
And uh, they're also very useful for block validation in uh, proof of stake protocols for permission ledgers. Um, the case of uh, block validation in uh, proof of stake protocols is the case that was the inspiring scenario for our work. So let me take some time to explain the setting um, in more details. In uh, proof of stake, um, we assume that um, the time uh, is built in epochs and in every epoch there is a fixed committee of n validators. So now every block that is being proposed within this epoch will be signed by a subset or a subcommittee of this uh, initial validator committee. For every single block that is being proposed, this subcommittee will need to compute a multi-signature on the block. So our goal was to come up with a protocol that optimizes the BLS multi-signature for this very particular scenario of uh, having a fixed set of possible signers and subsets of this set of, sets of signers signing um, messages uh, at each time. In order to explain how a protocol works, let me start by recalling how does the BLS multi-signature uh, scheme work, and this is a scheme that is due to Bonnet et al. So, in terms of public parameters, we assume a group G of prime order Q with generator G and a bilinear pairing E. A key generation algorithm is going to generate the secret and public key of the scheme. Uh, the secret key is randomly picked from Z star Q and the public key is simply computed as um, Z to the SK. Now, assuming that we have a set of M signers with public keys PK1 to PKM, the aggregated public key under which the signature will verify is computed as follows. Um, it is computed as the product of every individual key PKI raised to this special exponent AI where this exponent AI for each key is computed as the hash of all the public keys plus this particular public key um, uh, where the exponent is, for which the exponent is used for. So the signing process of a message um, includes uh, computing a signature, a separate signature for every single one of the signers. In order to compute the signature, you can simply hash the message or the block for the case of proof of stake and uh, raise the output of the hash to the secret key times the special exponent. The um, final multi-signature is the result of the aggregation of these individual uh, sigma i's. The verification algorithm takes as input the aggregated public key, the multi-signature and the message or the block, and um, simply checks if um, the following bilinear pairing um, equation is satisfied. And uh, for the purposes of this talk, just um, uh, trust me, I'm not going to prove correctness, but trust me that uh, verification here works. Uh, something to notice here is that typically uh, key aggregation happens along with uh, verification. So you don't need the aggregated public key in order to sign, but you are going to need to compute the aggregated public key in order to verify the signatures. So very often the key aggregation cost is a cost that comes along with verification. The observation, however, here is that those two algorithms will have to be uh, repeated. All the operations in those two algorithms in key aggregation and signing will have to be repeated for every subcommittee, for every subset of M validators that is formed in order to sign a new block. So our inspiration here was whether we can come up with a protocol that will pay the expensive part of the key aggregation algorithm just once for every epoch for the full set of the N committee members. And if you notice here the key aggregation algorithm, the expensive part is actually this exponentiation. So in order to explain our scheme and better highlight the difference from the original BLS scheme, um, I'm going to keep the original BLS uh, multi-signature scheme on the left-hand side of my slide and that will show our proposed scheme in the right-hand side of our slide um, in order to better um, showcase the differences. So the parameters remain as before 
And again, recall that we have a fixed committee of N members and then multi-signatures computed by subcommittees, subsets, that each one includes M signers. So the key generation algorithm for each one of the committee members, for each one of the signers, rem remains exactly the same. But now, here is what changes. At the beginning of its, uh, of its epoch, once the set of the N committee members is fixed, every single committee party is going to run a new algorithm that we introduce and we call it the key randomization algorithm. How does this algorithm work? Every party is going to re-randomize their keys as follows. PK star, the re-randomized key of the party I, is going to be equal to whatever PKI was before, raised to this special exponent AI, which is computed in the same way as with the BLS malware signature. So AI is going to be the hash of now all the public keys of all the committee members and the particular public key um, for which the exponent is being used for. Similarly, the parties will also re-randomize their secret keys by also multiplying them with the special exponent in order to preserve this unique relation between the public key and the secret key. Again, recall that this process will only happen once at the beginning of the epoch and will happen for all the public keys uh, of the committee, for all n public keys. Now, the actual multi-signatures that we will have to compute will um, consist of um, smaller subsets of these n committee members. So let's say now that we want to have um, a multi-signature between M members of this committee. So now the observation is that we can run the key aggregation algorithm by using the already re-randomized public keys of these committee members. And now the aggregated public key will simply be the multiplication of those public keys. So there is no need for any exponentiations when, computed he when computing here the aggregated public key as opposed to the original PLS multi-signature. The signing algorithm is very similar as before, but again there is no need to use the special exponent when signing. Um, the secret key is already randomized once um, at the beginning of this process and the aggregation of the signatures works in exactly the same way. The verification, the resulting signature, has exactly the same format, so the verification algorithm uh, remains the same. So again, the observation here is that by running this key randomization algorithm once at the beginning of the epoch, we manage to save m exponentiations per multi-signature that is being computed later within the epoch. As we're going to see in the implementation result, Results. This is actually um, a very, very important uh, saving. So let us take a closer look into um, implementation. So let's uh, look into the implementation of our um, subset uh, multi-signature with uh, uh, key randomization. Um, so here we're going to see a graph that uh, shows the execution time of um, the different algorithms of our scheme. Um, when considering uh, different uh, sizes of uh, signers, differ different numbers of signers. Um, the results that we report here are the results that we got in a low-end um, machine. And um, let me also clarify that for notational simplicity, when I presented our schemes in the previous slides, I assumed that all operations uh, happened in the same group. group. Um, in practice, however, when uh, somebody implements BLS, uh, we can uh, implement BLS in different ways depending on the, on the group selection and uh, here we provide two implementations, one where the signature is a group element of G1 and the public key is a group element of G2 and this is what we denote as min sig in our implementation and we also provide a second implementation where the signature is a group element of G2 and the public key is a group element of G1 which is denoted as uh, our mean PK implementation. Uh, we also note that from our uh, implementation results, we omit the key generation algorithm since it is only run, run once during setup. And we also omit the signing algorithm uh, because this is independent of the number of signers. 
So um, we combine the costs of key aggregation and verification um, together since, as I explained before, key aggregation typically happens together with verification of the signature. And um, here, just to, um, to give an indicated number, uh, if you consider a setting that has up to 100 signers computing a multi-signature, you can observe that, takes, that it takes less than 0 0.2 uh, milliseconds to um, aggregate the signatures and less than 1.5 milliseconds to verify the signatures. I think it's um, even more interesting to consider our baseline comparisons, uh, to consider how our scheme compares with the baseline here. Um, and by baseline, again, we mean the BLS multi-signature scheme by Bonetto. So again, this comparison has been done in a low end machine, the, the numbers that you see here. But in our paper, you can find um, additional comparison numbers in more powerful machines as well. So again, in this graph, um, we can see uh, how our implementations compare for different numbers of signers and execution times. And um, we also provide, uh, as before, both uh, min sig and min uh, pk implementations, both for our scheme and the, uh, the baseline um, uh, scheme as well. So recall from our comparison between the schemes before that um, the Bonnet all scheme randomizes its signature before aggregation and multi multiplies its signature and public key by this random exponent AI before the aggregation. So here, the observation is that you need to pay the cost of one elliptical addition and one scalar multiplication for every signature and public key. And this accounts for the performance differences when compared with our scheme that randomizes secret keys only once upon setup rather than individual signatures and entirely avoids any need for scalar multiplications during signature aggregation. So here you can observe that our min sig and min both our min sig and our min pk implementations have um, important um, gains here. Um, just um, to see the uh, just to focus on the case of aggregating less than 100 signatures, our schemes save um, roughly 25 milliseconds for our min pk uh, implementation and 50 milliseconds for our. Um, um, so the other way around, they save 25 milliseconds for our min sig implementation and 50 milliseconds for our min pk implementation uh, when compared to the, to the baseline of uh, Bonnet all. Um, finally, let me say a few things about the security of our schemes. Uh, the original BLS um, multi-signature is proven secure under um, uh, Diffie-Hellman in the random oracle model. Um, however, the proof technique that is being used in uh, Bonnet all uh, would fail in our case. So um, the, the proof is actually pretty involved. It does require rewinding uh, through the forking lemma. And uh, the rewinding approach that was used in uh, Bonnet all uh, would fail in our case unless we uh, force the adversary, the unforceability adversary, to declare ahead of time what is going to be the signer subset for which it will try to output a forgery. Um, so we ended up first giving a proof of our scheme, again, under the same assumptions as Bonnet all, but for a weaker adversary, for such an adversary that defines this subset. But uh, to also have a proof under a stronger adversary, um, we managed to leverage the algebraic group model and again give a proof of security under discrete log in AGM plus uh, the random oracle model, which unfortunately came with an exponential security loss, with a 2 to the n uh, security loss. What is important to highlight here is that this security loss is not just a proof artifact, uh, it actually can come with a potential concrete attack. So here, if you assume an adversary that can solve uh, this problem, this assumption that we call the random modular subset sum problem, it can actually forge signatures. Um, the RMSS assumption is a very well studied assumption and basically states that if you're given a set of S1 to Sn integers and another integer target T, um, you should try solving the assumption, solving the problem, essentially means to determine if there exists a subset I of integers within S that sums to that target T. 
So we can prove security of our scheme under discrete log and um, RMSS assumptions in AGM plus ROM. But um, understanding that RMSS is a strong assumption, we also want to highlight the following, that um, if the total number of possible subsets of possible subsets of signers here is negligibly smaller than the size of the output space of H, where H is the hash function that was used to generate these random exponents, um, then the probability of existence of a subset sum solution is negligible. So concretely, our scheme can be proven secure just under discrete log in AGM and row for special cases of um, the total number of possible subsets. Um, with that, let me conclude my talk and uh, say that you can find the full uh, version of our paper on imprint and thank you very much.